Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video we're going to be looking at sprites and in particular we're going to be putting together a sprite engine which is what a game would use to display sprites on the screen. Now remember that the IBM PC doesn't have any hardware in it for sprites so everything has to be done with the CPU itself. Uh, so it's really quite a task uh, the first thing that I'm going to do today is just draw a nice background image that we can use and it's actually a planet. So I opened up PC Paintbrush which has a CGA mode and I draw the outline of a circle and uh, the grey colour I just filled in and then I went over it with the spray can with some white and black to give it a bit of texture. And when I save this file it will save to PCX format. Uh, which is a kind of compressed graphics format. You can get a full screen graphic uh, in a few kilobytes. Uh, but it's a very, very simple format. It just counts the number of bytes in a row that are the same and just stores those values. Uh, so let's see what this looks like uh, when I load it with the program that I wrote. So I finished compiling my program and the first thing it does is ask for a video mode. So I'll give it 4 for the CGA mode and then it just draws the picture on the screen. Now I should say that I didn't have to work too hard for this because uh, I found some PCX code in an old DOS archive from way back in the day and uh, it was written in Turbo Pascal with some inline assembly so it was relatively easy to port that over to C and just use the uh, assembly language adapted to work with the Turbo Assembler. Uh, so the next thing that we want to draw is a sprite and of course that's just a small image uh, so of course we'll draw this first in PC Paintbrush and then we'll draw it on the screen and move it about and see what happens. This is what I came up with, it's a little green man flying around in a UFO. Now of course I'll save that to a file but it'll be a full screen PCX file and uh, obviously the first thing I want to do is write a small program to cut that down so that I just have the sprite itself and not all the surrounding black. The other thing is PCX is not a very convenient format for sprites and I really just want the pixel information so the program will also rewrite the file into a different format which I'll call .dat and that will just contain the actual bytes for the picture. So this is the little program that I wrote, uh, Sprite to Dat. Uh, we'll just enter a video mode for CGA. Then it takes the name of the file, which is ufo.pcx, and it'll load that from disk. And you can see that the sprite is at the moment in the middle of the screen. Uh, now when I press enter, it'll rewrite that to a new file, ufo.dat. Uh, it tells me where it found the sprite on the screen so that I can check that it really found the right thing and it wrote 338 bytes and it tells me that this is a 48 by 28 pixel sprite uh, which sounds about right and then it'll actually load that from the disk again just to prove that uh, the dat file is actually correct. Now the thing I'll need to do next is write some code to shift the sprite along. Now obviously if I want to shift across by 4 pixels that's no problem, I just shift everything by one byte in memory. Uh, but shifting by one pixel at a time is much more complicated because there are four pixels in each byte. Uh, now of course it's going to be way too expensive to do all that calculation on the fly. So the best way to handle this is actually to write code that creates four copies of the sprite, each shifted by one pixel from the previous one. And then when we draw the sprite on the screen, we just choose the appropriate one and just write the bytes directly onto the screen. That's the fastest way of doing it, rather than doing the shift computation every single time you want to move by a pixel. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do next, and so we should be able to move our sprite around on the background that we created earlier. This is the little program that I came up with. It draws the planet and the UFO and then every time I press the enter key it moves the UFO across to the right by one pixel. Now you can see that there's a little problem here. I'm not blanking uh, the old image before putting the new image over the top and so anything that's left of the old image uh, just remains on the screen. So you get a little trail of dots that follows the UFO around. 
Now obviously I want to fix that and there's various ways of doing this. Uh, one way is that you can draw a black border around the image and then when you shift the image all that you're leaving behind is black dots and so this looks okay. Now that works just fine if your background is a solid color like black background and uh, so long as you don't jump by more than the width of the border and you don't need your sprite to bump into anything uh, then that'll work just fine. Uh, but suppose we wanted to move that sprite over the planet there uh, then obviously just writing black background uh, when we move the sprite isn't going to work or it's going to leave black background all over the planet. So instead we need to save the background before we draw the sprite and then restore it again before we put the next image down. Uh, so I'm going to do that and the other thing I want to change is I'd like to be able to move the sprite around with the keyboard. So I'm going to write a little keyboard interrupt handler which enables me to tell when the arrow keys have been pressed because there's no C function for doing that and that'll enable me to move the UFO around the screen with the keyboard. This is the result now and you can see that it flickers a lot more than before uh, but at least when I move about uh, I don't leave dots behind the UFO as it moves. Uh, you can also see that the interrupt handle is working nicely. I can move in eight different directions with the arrow keys. And if I go over the planet, uh, you can see that it restores the background correctly when I move away. So uh, all of that seems to be working fine. Uh, but what's with this ugly flicker? And why do we have lines scrolling through the image? Well, the flicker's just simply because we're flashing between image and background uh, because every time we replace the image we have to replace the background. Uh, the lines are due to the fact that we're doing all of our updating at random times. I mean the electron beam could be painting any part of the screen uh, at the time that we draw the image. And uh, so we want to avoid that and one way to do that is just to wait for vertical retrace uh, before doing any updating. So let's try that and see if it makes any difference. This is what things look like now with a wait for vertical retrace. Uh, now you can see that we've gotten rid of the black lines that were sort of randomly scrolling through the image uh, but it's pretty clear that, that quite a lot of the flicker is still there. Uh, in fact it actually looks like it's just flickering faster than it was before. Uh, it's a little bit of an improvement, but it hasn't fixed it entirely. But don't fear, we will fix the flicker entirely by the end of this video. Uh, but for the time being, there's something else that I want to sort out. And that is, uh, when I move the sprite over the planet, you can see that there's this black box around it. And that's because all of the black pixels in the sprite image are overriding what's on the planet. What we really want to do is consider all black pixels in the sprite as being transparent. And so there's a very standard way of doing this uh, using an AND and an OR logical operation uh, with a mask. So what we do is everywhere that there is a color in the sprite that's not black, uh, we put a 1 in our mask and everywhere there's black in the, in the sprite we put a zero in our mask and we use this mask to determine which pixels of uh, the image we should be drawing and the other ones we just don't draw them we just leave them as they are. Uh, so we'll do this next and hopefully that will get rid of the black box that surrounds our sprite. I've made that change and you can see that it's a lot slower now uh, even the flashing is slower and the UFO moves about really slowly. Uh, but when I go over the planet, you'll see that it doesn't uh, have this ugly square black uh, surround on the sprite. Uh, just the pixels of the sprite itself are now being uh, drawn. Uh, now the reason it's slower is because it has to read CGA memory, do an AND and an OR, and then write uh, to CGA memory, uh, which is a very, very slow process. Uh, so this explains why we have the flicker as well. Everything that we're doing now is just taking far too long. So in order to improve things further, we're going to have to make some changes. The standard way of getting rid of the flicker is to use something called page flipping. Now, the CGA hardware doesn't have page flipping, but we can emulate that. 
Uh, the way it's done is to allocate a block of memory in main memory rather than the uh, graphics card and do all of our updating there and then use a very very fast assembly language routine to just copy across uh, the data that's actually changed. So of course we need to copy across the original sprite uh, and we need to copy across the new sprite uh, every time we move uh, the object about. And uh, so basically we just draw a box that uh, covers both and copy all of that data all at once uh, using a very very fast routine. So this would eliminate the flicker entirely uh, but there's another thing that we want to do and that is to get our frame rate up. At the moment uh, we've only got one sprite on the screen so you can imagine if we had five or ten sprites just how slow this would be. Uh, so in order to make things much faster we need to compile our sprites so for that we'll need to write a sprite compiler which is really quite a large project but I have actually worked on this for a number of weeks now and uh, what it does is it takes the sprite image and it writes a computer program from that image and it writes the exact assembly language instructions that are needed to draw that sprite on the screen and in fact there's one version of this for each of the four different positions that the sprite can be in uh, and of course there's uh, you know code to handle the mask and uh, it has to also uh, deal with some other things which I'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Uh, but with those two improvements, the page flipping and the sprite compiler, we can get the times right down so that the frame rate goes up uh, and we can get rid of the flicker. Let's take a look at the sprite compiler in action. So I just run sprite comp and I select 4 for the video mode and I'm going to take our original ufo.dat which is the image file and it'll sit there for some time and it will compile a version of this image to an assembly language program uh, and then it will shift it across by one pixel and compile another version shift that across and another and so on and then at the end it tells me that it's written a program called ufo.c so let's have a look at what it's written uh, the program itself is quite long it's about 57 kilobytes and you can take a look at what it does it uses a whole bunch of inline assembly uh, to dr write functions for showing uh, the UFO so this is the first version and then uh, after some time it'll come to a second version uh, and then a third version and so on so there are four different versions uh, of the UFO that are drawn here uh, so it saves a lot of work uh, if you had to write a file like this by hand you'd be there for a very very long time uh, so let's now use this to actually draw our sprite uh, with the page flipping uh, that I've also implemented in our animation program. So at last this is what this looks like and uh, the UFO now moves very very fast and the only flicker that you're seeing now is from the camera. Uh, it's completely smooth uh, on the screen and no flicker is visible uh, to the naked eye at all and of course it will go over the planet uh, just fine. Uh, so the sprite compiler and the page flipping completely solves all of our problems. Uh, but there's a few other issues that I should talk about. What happens when the sprite goes off the edge of the screen? Uh, naively you'd expect it to wrap around. But remember that we're writing our sprites into main memory, not into graphics memory first. And so what I do is I make the uh, picture in main memory uh, wider and higher than uh, the screen. So when the sprite compiler writes uh, the sprite into uh, main memory, if it's off the edge here, it's just writing to a piece of main memory that's never actually copied into the video card. And similarly, if I do the same thing at the bottom of the screen uh, or the top of the screen, uh, just make it a little bit wider and a little bit higher, uh, then we don't have a wraparound problem. Uh, so once that problem is solved, what else is there to do? Well, there is one more thing that we want, and that is multiple sprites. And if you think about it, uh, if you have, say, five or ten different sprites on the screen at the same time, 
uh, they might cross one another and they might interfere. Now that's not a problem except that remember each sprite is saving the background image whatever happens to be there and then writing it back afterwards. Now if one of the other sprites has moved in the meantime writing back the background would be writing back the old position of that sprite. Uh, so we need to be very very careful about the order that we do things. Basically you go through and you draw all the sprites in some order, one through n say, and then you have to undraw them, uh, so put the background back in the reverse order, so that you're always putting back uh, exactly what was behind that sprite before you drew it. And if you do that, everything will work out just fine, and you can have multiple sprites on the screen at the same time, and they can even cross each other's paths. So let's take a look at that and see what that looks like, and it'll also give us a chance to judge just how fast this is running. This is the result, and uh, I have eight sprites at once here. Uh, they're just moving about randomly, so they'll have a tendency to get stuck off screen for a while before wandering back on again. Uh, but you can see that we're getting about 10 frames per second, and these are really quite large sprites. Normally uh, you would use smaller ones in a game, and they would run a lot faster. There are some potential improvements to the sprite uh, compiler itself. Uh, it doesn't really write completely optimal assembly language at the moment. Uh, that could be improved a little, which would up the frame rate slightly. Uh, but I do think that this is uh, pretty good and could be used for quite a lot of games. Now, what else uh, could you do? Well, uh, some games would require sprites that change size, for example, as they move into the distance. Uh, or maybe uh, sprites that are animated and so that adds another level of complexity on top of a sprite engine like this uh, but even as things are at the moment we have a pretty good uh, and general sprite engine uh, which doesn't have a lot of uh, you know difficulty uh, for its use uh, so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, especially as we move towards writing games and demos for CGA, uh, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And hopefully we'll see you in a later video. Bye!